All right, guys, welcome to our A hey, mock. Are you excited? No? Our last session, you know. Yeah. Well, are you going to miss one. this? Yes, fantastic. Well, what, what is God going to show us in mm. the book of Haggai? Let us pray, man. Yep. Let us pray. Mm. God, thank you that you have been speaking. And I mm. pray mm. that we will be responding. Mm. And I really pray for Mock, myself, mm. and those listening that will we consider our ways. Mm. Will we ask ourselves, how have we been faring? Mm. And in today's session, will you speak again to us? Yep. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. It says here, the word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth. And to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders and their horses and their riders shall go down everyone by the sword of his brother. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shutel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring. For I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. Wow, unbelievable. So this is the last session and we see amazing truths in this, right? Mm -hmm. And well, let's, let's quickly run through what we've learned. So we, the, the Israelites came back, they struggled with building a temple. Mm -hmm. God through Haggai motivated them, encouraged them, asked them to be strong. Mm -hmm. And he, he says that, you know, I'm disciplining you to draw you back to me. Yeah. And here we see that God is giving them the final push to yes. encouragement to keep building the temple. Yeah. And the first thing that he does again is judgment, right? Judgment will come. He is here, he's going to shake mm -hmm. the heavens and the earth, right? Yeah. This judgment is real, right? It's not something that is make-believe. Indeed, God is coming the second time, even in, in, in today's time, day and age, yep. right? And who will be destroyed? Let's look at that, right? It's kingdoms of these nations and the people. In Colossians 2.25, Jesus disarmed the rulers and authorities yeah. and Christ will be victorious, right? So that, that's amazing. God yeah. is coming. But will He win or not? Wow, I think that's a very interesting question. Will He win or not? Mm. The issue is, he will, it's not about whether he will win or not, yep. but because Jesus came, he died, he, he resurrected, and he will come again, yep. and the evil one will lose, mm. we are already fighting this battle on the premise that Christ mm. has won. Yes, Christ right? has won. So, it's not about fighting to win the battle. Mm. It's, about, it's about fighting from the position of victory yep. as we fight this battle. Mm. So, from this position of victory, we are actually quite freeing. Right, yeah. example, again, the same example that Mok shared with us. Yeah. Imagine going to an exam tomorrow, knowing that you will pass, but all you got to do is give your best. Yeah. That frees you up, you know, to really enjoy studying. Exactly. So you can be the best version of yourself. Exactly. Yeah, so in this way, as the scripture really promises us that Christ has won the battle, mm. and we are fighting this spiritual life from the position of assume a definite victory. Yeah, yeah. How does that shape the way you do life today? How does that make you feel? How about you, Mok? Yeah. How does that make you feel in the spiritual walk today? It means that, um, practically it just means that I really have, I can have the freedom to abide in His Word, mm -hmm. do His commandments, and know that everything else is secure, right? Mm -hmm. That I'm only doing things to please Him, mm -hmm. And that frees me up from the desire to please people, mm -hmm. right? And, that, that, and because I know that he has really won, uh -huh. right? So that, that really gives me the encouragement and hope and the perseverance uh, yeah. to do what we do, right? Yeah. For me, it frees me up not to depend on my own strength. Mm. Because like in a battle, if I'm not, if I'm not sure if the battle is warm, mm. I still need to you know, get my hands dirty, fight, mm. and if I get slashed or what, I'm not sure if my sacrifice will be in vain. Mm. But knowing that it's already been won, yep. it actually frees me up. That I don't have to be too consumed about what I can do or what I cannot do. Right? Mm. So as we see mm. from this scripture, judgment will come. Mm. God will be victorious. And the last, God chooses His people. Mark, share yes. us more about that. Yes. 
So I think the last verse, uh, the last verse is uh, towards Zerubbabel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, let's look at that. Like a signet ring, for I have chosen you. Mm -hmm. So a signet ring is a, is a symbol of authority and power. And it is used to seal letters and decrees, meaning that it's irreversible. For example, in Esther 8.8, 8, it says, uh -huh. An edict was written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. Wow. That means if God chosen you, that seal is cannot be revoked. You are chosen yeah. forever. And it's here we see... Permanent tattoo. Permanent. It's permanent, <laughs> right? Your salvation is eternal and secure in Christ. Because here we see Zerubbabel is chosen. And we know in Luke 3.27, yeah. Zerubbabel is in the Messianic line for Christ. Mm -hmm. And through Zerubbabel, because God's chosen ones will be hidden in Christ. Colossians 3.3, life is hidden with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. So that means through Zerubbabel, through Christ, and all Christians who believe in Christ will be hidden in Him. Yeah. And therefore, all that God's chosen will be glorified. And I think that that is summed up nicely in Romans 8.30. Those whom He predestined, He also called. And those whom He called, He also justified. And those whom He justified, He also glorified. Yeah. And I think this is a great encouragement for us in Christ that we will we never be lost, you know. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ will never lose any of His sheep. Mm -hmm. Our eternity is secure. Yeah. So again, this all really points us yep. to just two options. Yep. One, disobey God, face the consequences, mm. and judgment will come. Yep. Two, respond to God, obey Him because He enables you, mm -hmm. and through your obedience, you get blessing. And as you are blessed, you also know that you are doing it from a position of victory. Mm. Right? So I think the whole book of Haggai yep. points us to this pertinent question. Will we choose to obey God on His terms mm. today? When we disobey, there is consequences yeah. and judgment. Yep. When we obey, there is blessings mm. and there is this sense of you are already yes. fighting from a position of victory. Mm. So how about you? You mm. know, in these whole eight episodes that we did, yep. what is that one thing that God is causing you to want to respond to Him in obedience. Mm. What is that one thing? And if I say, if there's just one thing that we can identify and obey God and turn, uh, turn back to Him, mm. it's a great step ahead. Is that right, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the biggest thing is really to ask ourselves, to test our faith. Right? Are we in Christ? Are we in Christ? And really, that is the ultimate question. Because the biggest thing in, in this world is really uh, being secure in Christ. All things in, that we have now in our possessions uh, will fade away. Mm -hmm. The real question is, are we in Christ? And that's what the book of Haggai is asking us. Are we obedient? Are we repenting and believing in the kingdom, you know, for our eternal life? Yeah. So thank you guys for sticking with us through these eight episodes. We hope that as you journey with us and as we journey with you, we have understood the wonders of the book of Haggai mm. together. And let us spur each other on to obey God's word together as well. Mm. And with that, for the last time, I'm Ivan. I'm Mark. And we'll see you when we see you. <laughs>